Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church Bestbrook. This is the 16th Sunday after Trinity. We welcome also those who are watching the service this morning via the internet. And our service this morning is morning prayer number two, which you'll find on page 101 of our prayer book. The Lord be with you. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 477. We praise you, Lord, today. sentence of scripture comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Merciful Lord, grant to your faithful people pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins, and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. 
O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, and is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to the O come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving, and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hands moulded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Today, if only you would hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me, put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I loathed that generation and said, It is a people who are in their hearts, for they do not know my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be forever. Amen. The appointed psalm this morning is Psalm 137, and we'll be reading verses 1 to 6 in alternate half verse about. You'll find it on page 753. Psalm 137 page 753. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept. As for our lyres, we hung them up. For there our chapter asked for a song our tormentors called for mirth. How shall we sing the Lord's song? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated for our first reading. The first reading can be found on page 227 of the New Testament and is from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in the suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God. 
who saved us and called us with his holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasures entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand as we read together the words of part one of the Te Deum on page 106 of the prayer book. We praise you, O God. We claim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Please be seated for the second reading. Second reading can be found on page 85 of the New Testament and is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 17, beginning at verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord replied, If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave, who has just come in from ploughing or tending sheep in the field, Come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me. Put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink. Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now stand as we say together the words of the Benedictus on page 107. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us the mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of those who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hand of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation 
by the forgiveness of all our sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second hymn this morning is hymn 595. recite together our belief in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. O Lord, save the King. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness. 
O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And the collect of the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your protection, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger, and in all things guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Merciful God, by your grace, you have called us, not as we deserve, but in your goodness and generosity. Guard and protect us in our calling, that we may be strong in faith and serve you in joy and love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your love and care. You accept us and restore us. We pray for the healing ministry of the church, for faith healers and groups that meet to pray for healing, for all who bless others through the laying on of hands. We pray for the work of the church with the healing professions. We remember hospital chaplains and those who visit the infirm. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Archbishop John McDowell and the people of the parishes of Tatarahan and Diamond and their rector, David Hilliard, and parish readers, Eleanor Troughton, Richard Robinson and Samuel Neal. We pray for the people of the Diocese of Limerick, Hartford, Akado, Killaloo, Kilmacdo, and Emily, and their bishop, the Right Reverend Michael Burroughs. We pray too for our partner, Diocese Madi West Nile, Church of Uganda. And in the Anglican Communion, we pray for the people of the Anglican Church of Canada. Father, we give you thanks for your church throughout the world and ask that it might share in your healing and bringing of peace. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations. We pray for the healing of the nations, for the cure of past hurts, for forgiveness of past sins, and all that take the opportunity for a new start. That animosity may be exchanged for trust and love. We remember communities broken by war, hatred and suspicion. We pray for those driven out of their land and homes by hatred and violence. O Lord, our governor, whose glory is in all the world, we commend to your merciful care the people and government of the Ukraine, that being guided by your providence, they may dwell secure in your peace. Grant their leaders and all in authority wisdom and strength to know to do your will. Fill them with love of truth and righteousness and make them ever mindful of their calling to serve their people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
prayer for the local community. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for our lives and all we can do. We pray for our homes and the communities to which we belong. We pray for families who are suffering from a breakdown in their relationships, for children who suffer, and for those taken into care. We pray for the brokenhearted and the lonely. Father, we thank you for the fruits of the earth in their season and for the labours of those who harvest them. May we be faithful stewards of your great bounty for the provision of our necessities and the relief of all who are in want. To the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The prayer for people in need. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless all who are disoriented or distressed, all who are ill. We bring before you all who are about to go into hospital, all who suffer from strokes, heart attack, and sudden illness. And we remember all who are chronically ill. We pray for friends and loved ones in their needs. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for all who have passed through brokenness to new life and glory, where sorrow and pain are no more. We pray for loved ones who have entered into eternal life. Today, we especially pray for the members of the Anderson and Young families who have lost their dearly beloved son and brother, Clifford. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of thy great goodness in past years, and in the sure expectation of a joyful reunion in the heavenly places. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We conclude our prayers by the saying together of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I have a few announcements for you this morning. An important one for me, because I sort of hail from Mullet Lass, is that our harvest service is tonight at 7 p.m. And we welcome everyone along to that service. I understand there will be a cup of tea at the end of it as well. Another date to remember for your diary is Ballymire Harvest, which is on Friday the 7th of October. It's at 8 p.m. And again, the rector has asked me to say that we should all support our sister churches throughout the grouping of the four churches. And the harvest here will be on the 16th of October at 11.30 a.m. and at 7 p.m. Those are all the announcements that I have. We'll now sing hymn 639.
please be seated. The following sermon has been prepared by the Reverend Alan Sinnott, and as a parish reader, as always, it's a privilege for me to come along and read it to you today. The sermon is based on the gospel reading, which I read to you earlier. And we'll commence with a short prayer. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills, that we may serve you today, now and always. Amen. If I just had more faith, I think most of us have struggled with that at some point in our lives. If I just had more faith, I wouldn't have so many questions or doubts. If I just had more faith, God would answer my prayers. If I just had more faith, he wouldn't have died. She would have recovered. If I just had more faith, I would be more involved in the church. If I just had more faith, I would be a better person, a better parent, a better spouse. If I just had more faith, I would know what to do. I would handle things better. If I just had more faith, life would be different. It's an approach to faith at least as old as the apostles' own faith. It is the approach they have taken in today's gospel. Increase our faith, they asked Jesus. Jesus has just warned them not to become stumbling blocks to others and enjoined them to forgive as often as an offender repents, even if it is seven times in one day. That would be difficult. It would be a challenge to live that way. Increase our faith is their response. It seems like a reasonable request. If a little is good, a lot must be better. If McDonald's can supersize our fries and drink, surely Jesus can supersize our faith. The request to increase our faith, the belief that if I had more faith, things would be different, reveals at best a misunderstanding of faith in itself, and at worst, demonstrates our own unfaithfulness. Jesus is very clear that faithfulness is not about size or quantity. If you had faith the size of a mustard seed, he says, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Faith is not given to us in a packet to be spent as currency in our dealings with God. Faith is not measured out according to how difficult the task or work before us, Faith is not a thing we have or get. Faith is a relationship of trust and love. It means opening ourselves to receive another's life and giving our life to another. That other one is Jesus, the Christ. That one faith relationship is determinative of who we are and how we live. Faith's not about giving intellectual agreement to a particular doctrine or idea. Faith is not about how much or how strongly we believe Jesus' words or his actions. When we speak about a married couple and their faithfulness, we don't mean they believe or agree with each other's ideas or even a particular understanding of marriage. They are faithful because they have committed themselves to each other in love and trust. They're faithful because they continually give their life to the other and receive the other's life 
as their own. They're faithful because they carry with them that one relationship wherever they go, in all that they are and all that they do. So it is in our faith relationship with Jesus. Faith will not, however, change the circumstances of our lives. Instead, it changes us. Living in faith does not shield us from the pain and the difficulties of life, does not undo the past, and it will not guarantee a particular future. Rather, faith is the means by which we face and deal with the circumstances of life. The difficulties and the losses, the joys and the successes, the opportunities and the possibilities. Faith does not get us a pat on the back, a reward or a promotion in God's eyes. It is simply the way in which we live and move and have our being. So that at the end of the day, the faithful ones can say, without pride or shame, we have done only what we ought to have done, nothing more and nothing less. We have lived in openness to, trust in, and love for Christ. We have allowed him to guide our decisions, our words, and our actions. We have been sustained by him in both life and death. Faith, however, is not lived out in the abstract. It's practiced day after day in the ordinary, everyday circumstances. Some days, when the pain and heaviness of life seem more than we can carry, it is by faith and relationship with Jesus that we get up each morning and face the reality of life. Other days present other circumstances when we feel the pain of the world and respond with compassion by feeling the hunger, housing the homeless, speaking for justice, when we experience the brokenness of a relationship and offer forgiveness and mercy. When we see the downtrodden and offer our presence and our prayers. And all these we have lived, seen and acted by faith. Then there are days when we feel powerless, lost and do not know the way forward. By faith, we sit in silence and wait. Faith, then, is how we live. The lens through which we see ourselves, others, and the world. The criterion by which we act and speak. Faithfulness means that no matter where we go, no matter what circumstances we face, we do so in relationship with the one who created the one who loves, the one who sustains, the one who redeems us. The one who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. As Mrs. Harvey read to us earlier in the first reading. Jesus does not supersize our faith. It is not necessary. We live by faith, not because we have enough faith, but because we have faith, any faith, even mustard-sized faith. That is all we need. Jesus believes that, so should we. The question is not how much faith we have, but rather, how are we living the faith that we do have? How is our faith our relationship with Jesus changing our lives, our relationships, and the lives of others. If it is not, more of the same will surely make no difference. The mustard seed of faith is already planted within us. It is Christ himself. He has withheld from us nothing 
We already have enough. We already are enough. We do not need more. We need more response to the faith, the Christ, the mustard seed, the relationship we already have. And now to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honour, glory, might, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is hymn 562, Blessed Assurance, Jesus <coughs> is Mine. thanksgiving in your hearts to God and whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him amen blessed are all who put their trust in the Lord he will keep them in his presence and his peace the Lord be with you let us bless the Lord the King of Age is immortal and visible the only God be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.